In May of 2020, Nintendo added Panel to Pawn as a free game for Nintendo Switch Online players. Some people in the West know this game better as Tetris Attack, or Pokemon Puzzle League. But no matter what the title is, this is a highly entertaining puzzle game, with interesting mechanics and a great versus mode. Unfortunately, the menus and tutorials in Panel to Pawn on the Switch are only in Japanese, so I hope this video helps new players to better understand the game. Let's look at the menus. The one player game features an endless mode where you match panels while the game speed gradually increases. A score attack where you have two minutes to get a high score. and Stage Clear, which is similar to Endless Mode, but you need to remove as many panels as you can to reach a clear line. You progress through six characters and get to a credit screen if you win. These first three modes are all good for getting used to the play mechanics. The Puzzle Mode features preset boards that you need to clear using a limited amount of moves. There's no time limit, so you can plan your moves carefully. At the bottom of the menu is Versus Mode, the heart of the game. The one-player version is story-based. You fight against various opponents, attempting to defeat them by piling garbage blocks onto their screens. The two-player game features Score Attack, where players compete to get a higher score in best of three matches. And Versus Mode, where players compete directly against each other in best of three matches, sending garbage blocks over to their opponent's screens to mess them up. Characters you select will determine the graphics, music, and sound effects, but they don't affect gameplay. Unlock the two boss characters by pressing L and R together on both Player 1 and Player 2's controllers. Back at the main menu, there are tutorials on how to play. Let's look at these in more depth. The first choice explains what your buttons do. A or B both do the same thing. Swap the highlighted panels. L or R cause a new row of panels to rise from below. X or Y are only used in the one-player puzzle mode to undo your moves. Use either the left stick or the buttons to move the cursor. Since this game uses only four directions and accepts precise tapping inputs, the buttons can give you better control than the left stick. A controller with a D-pad, like the Switch Lite or Pro Controller, is even better and more comfortable. Test out which control method works best for you by quickly moving a specific panel from side to side Practice alternating the cursor movement with swapping. This helps you get used to moving panels rapidly to where you need them. If you need to move all the way to the side of your screen, hold the cursor in that direction and you'll zip over after a short pause. The second tutorial shows basic rules on matching panels. 
match three panels to clear them. Match more than three simultaneously to make a combo. Match panels falling from other cleared panels to create chains. The next tutorial really shows off the game's core mechanics. You don't have to plan all your moves in advance. You can move panels around to continue chains while panels clear out. So quick thinking and fast fingers will help you survive. This tutorial also explains how the game stops when you clear combos and chains, giving you some free time to get out of trouble. If you have panels near the top of the screen, other panels in the same column will bounce up and down as a warning. Complete a combo or chain during this warning phase to get even more stoppage time. This timer is much shorter in versus mode compared to single player modes. In versus mode, even if you have panels and garbage stacked beyond the top of the screen, You'll stay alive as long as you are actively clearing panels, even if you can't make a combo or chain. The first versus tutorial shows how combos and chains send garbage to your opponent's screen. Combos will create smaller garbage blocks. and chains will create a screen-wide garbage block. Take note that clearing just three panels in versus mode will not create any garbage for your opponent, so do this only as part of a larger strategy. Combo garbage is smaller and easier to clear, Focus on creating chains to pressure your opponent. Matching three exclamation mark panels creates a special screen-wide gray garbage block. The color of the garbage blocks comes into play when you're trying to remove them. The second versus tutorial shows how to clear garbage from your screen. Match panels that are touching a garbage block, and this will turn all the adjacent garbage blocks of the same color into regular panels. Large garbage blocks from longer chains will only be converted one line at a time. You'll have to keep clearing panels to get rid of these. Use the panels created from cleared garbage to create your own chains and combos. If your chain touches a large garbage block, you can continue clearing garbage while building up a large chain of your own, a perfect way to counterattack. The last choice in the main menu is for various demonstrations, including Combo clears, and chain clears. These demos can help you to visualize combo and chain opportunities in your own matches. The final demonstrations are where the real magic is. The first one shows you how to set up chains while you clear your first set of panels.
The second shows four techniques to make chains. Use a supporting panel to match a falling panel with another set that is one row up. Pull a matching panel underneath a falling panel to continue a chain. This is a common setup because you'll frequently find panels to clear from different rows. An important point here is that it's easy to pull a panel that is one space below, but it's either very difficult or impossible to pull the top panel over. Use a supporting panel to hold up two panels for a chain. The key here is getting the right timing. Too early and the left panel will drop. Too late and the panel will fall too far. Drop a panel through a cleared set. Again, timing is important. Drop the panel too early and it will match without creating a chain. Drop it too late and the other panels won't be eligible for a chain anymore. Also, notice that the cleared panels disappear from left to right. So this is easier to set up on the left side of cleared panels. The third demo shows how to create a long chain, piece by piece, without having to set up everything ahead of time. The fourth demo shows how to use those special timing techniques from earlier in more complex setups. And the final demo shows how chains happening at different times will add up together. The key here is that the spacing of the cleared panels is slightly different, so they match at slightly different times. There's an advanced technique I'd like to show you which is not demonstrated in these tutorials. You can grab a falling panel to continue a chain, a technique I'll call a hot swap. This takes precise timing and is hard to do consistently, but knowing that this is possible can help you when you're short on options. Here are some general strategies and advice for how I play in versus mode. Rounds usually start with an uneven pile of panels, and this formation happens in the aftermath of clearing a lot of panels. Sort your panels to keep your columns at an even height, and this will make it easier to move panels around. If you leave a column empty, leave it on the left or right edge to help you move a vital panel one row down. Always have a three panel clear ready at the top so that you can remove garbage quickly. Follow up a garbage clear by setting two panels vertically. Act quickly to use these two panels to continue a garbage chain. 
Keep in mind the garbage blocks clear from right to left. So set your two panels near the center right. Generally, go for longer chains, three or more clears, instead of single chains or combos. You'll generate garbage that is much more difficult to remove. Don't be afraid of having a lot of regular panels on your screen, because these are your tools for attacking your opponent. Keep your panels semi-high with the L or R buttons, so that you have plenty of panels to match. If you keep your stack low, you'll have fewer potential matches and might run out of moves. This might feel safe at first, but it gives your opponent lots of time to set up an attack. When you're not dealing with garbage blocks, focus on getting horizontal chains to maximize eligible panels, because this increases the number of panels available to match. Similarly, try to start chains lower on the board. This makes more panels available for chains than if you had changed something at the top. I hope you find this information useful and that you learn to enjoy this game as much as I do. Let me know about your own strategies and have fun!